Hey everyone, welcome back to the Prime 5, your five biggest Nintendo news stories in the last 24 hours. We have an update on Splatoon 3 for your phone, believe it or not. That's really strange. A rumor out there about a brand new Mario game, so that's always exciting to talk about. And so much more. If you enjoy this video, I hope you want to subscribe to the channel and drop a like on this video. That would be wonderful. We are on our road to 80,000 subscribers. We're inching ever closer to that goal. That that being said, let's get into the news. And our first story deals with Splatoon 3 widgets for your phone. Well, yeah, it was actually discovered and posted by Oatmeal Dome because nobody pays attention to the Nintendo Switch Online app. So nobody really knew this was a thing until he posted about it. What happened is the Nintendo Switch Online app was up updated to 2.3.0, which has allowed widgets on Android and iOS devices. The widgets are as follow. You can put your battle logs up in small or medium size, the stage schedule in medium and large size, your current gear in small and medium size, and your album in small, medium, and large. Also, notably, the stage schedule can show the Anarchy Battle and Salmon Run stuff, too, so you can set it to whatever you want to show. Obviously, widgets are a really neat thing on phones for quick looks at things you check all the time. Some people use it for email, some people use it for weather, and now you can use it for Splatoon 3 if you're just wondering, hey, is now the time when my favorite stages are up or my favorite modes or, you know, hey, what's my gear when I'm, when I'm talking with friends? I want to check my gear quick without having to get my Switch out. I think this is really convenient, really useful, and maybe one one of the first things that Nintendo Switch Online app is doing that people might actually take advantage of. The Nintendo Switch Online app does provide a lot of useful statistics for Splatoon 3 as well, just like it did for 2, but yeah, I don't know. I think this whole thing is kind of silly, it's kind of cool, but also... I still don't know if that's going to make me reinstall the app. So if you wanted to play a brand new 2D Mario game and you're tired of waiting for Nintendo to do make one, well, guess what? A fan has gone out and made his own through Mario Maker 2. Metroid Mike 64 has created what he calls Super Mario Brothers 5. It is designed to be as if Nintendo made it. All levels have a Koopaline as the end boss, and all of them are meant to feel like Nintendo games rather than the typical troll-style maker levels that'll throw all these additional challenges in that Nintendo would never do in an actual Mario game. The goal was to do something they felt Nintendo should have done and made a Mario game within Mario Maker 2 rather than just a couple stages. Here is Mike's Maker ID code if you want to go check out all of his stages that combined equal up to the game. I think he did a really, really good job. They look really good. I've seen a lot of video of them. I've played a few of them myself. Yes, these do feel like Nintendo made levels. And if you're Got that 2D Mario itch, maybe this will scratch it. Speaking of 2D Mario, we have a rumor about a new 2D Mario game that might be coming next year or early 2024. Now, this is according to a somewhat known leaker and Zippo, and yes, I know I've sworn off Zippo in the past, however, Emily Rogers provided some context behind Zippo's leaks, and it does appear that Zippo might actually be an insider that's just providing information way too early and that includes this time around but nintendo working on a new 2d mario i don't think would be that surprising after seeing the sales of mario maker 2 they might not think that's actually going to hurt a 2d mario game so here is what his post said about a 2d mario 2d mario action games are like a thing everyone knows so then it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that a new 2d mario is in development at nintendo epd in kyoto i have heard a few things about it it will be its own thing. The new Super moniker is being thankfully retired, so it won't be part of the new Super series, according to him. It will feature a new art style that will take some people by surprise. That's definitely shocking. It's very far along in development. Might be completed soon. Online multiplayer will be included. It will feature the return of four-man spike, and it will release during the 2023 and 2024 fiscal year. Given that we have a new Super Mario Brothers movie coming on April 7th, my guess is, and this is just a guess, that it'll release sometime around then. This will be our first original 2D Mario in over a decade, which is pretty exciting. And look, some people might already have heard about this because this was posted by him back on August 30th, but we didn't cover it because at the time we had sworn off Zippo. So I'm slowly bringing in some of the stuff he said as we get closer and closer to Mario news actually happening. Remember, we have brand new Mario news happening on October 6th. We have the teaser trailer for the Mario movie coming out on April 7th. So look, 
the idea of a 2D Mario coming out sometime around the movie, to me, wouldn't be that surprising. In fact, I could see it being announced at February's Direct and then releasing in June. I think that would actually be a really nice release date for it. It's a little bit after April. It's enough time between the Direct and then to ramp up marketing. But hey, who knows? All I know is I'm all ready for some more official 2D Mario, not just the fan-made kind. Next up, we get to talk about Dragalia Lost, a game I didn't think we'd really talk about again because it is coming to a close in November. Nintendo's closing down their mobile phone game, one of their only original IP phone games, mostly because the user base has dwindled and it's getting to that point that, hey, you know what, it just makes more sense to close down development. Well, they have included an end credit scene now to the main story that you can, you know, get through right now. Like, you can go watch it. It's nine minutes long, and while you've been seeing some of it here, you can go watch the full nine minutes for yourself if you just rather not reboot up Dragalia Lost. It was, in my opinion, one of Nintendo's better mobile games, so it is a bit sad to see the end of the era essentially here. These end credits for the main story basically confirm the game is at its end, even though its servers aren't shut down or won't be until November. Still, this is something noteworthy since this was one of Nintendo's first forays into the mobile gaming space, and now we are reaching an end for it. Now our last story is something we talked about on live stream last night, but in case you missed it, I just wanted to remind people that E3 is back officially. It has a date. It's going to be June 13th through the 16th. There's going to be media only days, which is the 13th and 14th. And then the 15th is a crossover day with media and public. And then the 16th is going to be public exclusive, although obviously I'm assuming media can be there because media are part of the public after all. That being said, there's going to be separate areas. They're going to be inviting in all of the various events happening around them, whether it's Microsoft at the Microsoft Theater, if EA does their own thing, if there's people out in the streets setting up booths, all of that's going to be considered part of E3 if they want to. And on top of that, the ESA will not be charging them to be part of E3, which is something the ESA has done in the past and it's really driven away some game developers. So like, hey, we're not even in the convention center. Or why do we have to pay you? That doesn't make any sense. Well, now they don't have to, and they could just be a part of the E3 experience. They're going to try to open up an extra hall that's going to be for media only, and then there's going to be the big public area, which, yes, the media can access that big public area early as well. So, look, I think this is all really, really good. Media registration is supposed to be for the end of this year. You guys know that we'll be trying to get media passes, and if we do, we'll be going to E3 ourselves next year. Don't worry. We are working on preliminary plans for a Prime Gaming Fest for E3 next year as well. It's just that Prime Gaming Fest is going to be a little bit different than the one we ran at home because we obviously are going to have the luxury of all of this in, that you see on screen right now. See all this? Like, there's no luxury of having this there. We have to make do with what we're able to bring with us. That being said, I am Nathaniel Rumpeljantz from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank all of you for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next video.